zero. Boom. Hi, good morning, everybody. This is Jake Leachko. It's seven o'clock Thursday morning. What date is it today? August 24. Today is the feast day of St. Bartholomew. St. Nathaniel, the one that our Lord has described as the, uh, the one who had no guile, right? The guy who had no guile. Okay, uh, yesterday I just, uh, yesterday <laughs> I had to make a trip. We had to make a trip uh, to the Bay Area. So we actually began this broadcast very early. We started at five, uh, a little past five o'clock. So I apologize. I did not announce that we were going to start early yesterday. So in case you did not uh, catch the broadcast, well, it still is on my timeline, of course. So you might want to go and look back and, and, and do that. Okay. So today, we have this gospel from St. Matthew. It's about the calling of Nathaniel, the calling of St. Bartholomew. Bartholomew and Nathaniel, they're the same person, okay? Um, it, it seems like uh, um, perhaps uh, Nathaniel was like the first name of Bartholomew. Uh, anyway, there's no historical uh, verification uh, between one and the other. But anyway, uh, we know that uh, they're one and the same person. Okay. So here goes the gospel for today uh, from St. John. Philip, I want you to pay attention to this. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law, and also the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. But Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? He was immediately critical, right? He was immediately uh, applying a stereotype on Jesus. Okay? And Philip said to him, well, come and see. See for yourself, right? Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Right? He's very sincere. He's very transparent. No duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered him, Oh, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathaniel answered him, Got surprised. He saw me under the fig tree? Wow. That immediately changed his idea of Jesus, right? And immediately uh, responded, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe just because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? Well, you will see greater things than that, than this. And he said to him, Amen, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. End of gospel for today. Um, I want to bring up two things in this gospel commentary. But the first one, which I think is uh, very important and in fact very relevant to the times that we in the United States are experiencing nowadays in the light of all of these rallies in Virginia, in Charlottesville, in, in Durham, North Carolina, etc. and other places too. And in all of those other places that are not publicized, right? Uh, Racism is a big thing. Uh, people being critical about other people and races and color, etc. That's exactly what Nathaniel did here. He applied a stereotype of how people thought about people who coming from different places like Nazareth. And immediately criticized Jesus for what he thought he was. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Okay. Well, that's what's happening now. People applying stereotypes on other people. What's so good about this race? What's so good about, oh, those people, they're all like that. Oh, these think. Let's remember, folks, whatever you do to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Right? That's what our Lord said. That whatever we do to the least of our brethren, to the least of our neighbors, we did it to him. So really, 
when we are critical about other people, when we apply these stereotypes, when we are uh, critical for no, for no reason. Okay? Because having critical spirit, having critical thoughts, having critical words that are not based on objective truth are nothing but a lack of charity. Okay? That is exactly what it is. It's, it's uncharitable. It's just critical spirit. It's uncharitable. And it is not good. It is not good. Okay? Remember what we always say here at home? Smart people talk because... They have something to say. They have something to say. Meaning that there is some truth that they need to talk about. That's what smart people do. And dumb people, not dumb people talk because... They just have to say something, right? Even if it doesn't make sense. Even if it is rude. Even if it is whatever it is. It's not smart. So even from the human point of view, it is not smart to be saying things out of critical spirit alone and not out of love, not out of charity, right? So let us remember, every time we open our mouth, whatever we do to the least of our brethren, we do it for Jesus Christ. So you better remember that before you open your mouth towards your brothers and sisters, before you say anything, right? Before you criticize. Remember, the beam in your own eye. Okay? Remember that before you pay attention to the speck in the eye of the other. Okay? And that is charity. So Nathaniel did the same thing, right? Immediately he applied the stereotype on Jesus. Oh, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip just said, well, you know, come and see for yourself. And of course, immediately upon being in front of Jesus, he changes his perspective completely. Right? And that's what happens to us too. Once we are exposed to the truth, we change our mentality about people. Once we encounter real people and see that they are not what we think or people say they are, then everything changes. So let's remember that. Okay, let's remember that. Critical spirit is not good. Now, I just want to bring out another fact about this story, which I think is also very nice. This is uh, a little bit about Catholic trivia already, but uh, at the same time, it's very important for, for us to understand. Who brought Nathaniel to Jesus? Philip, Philip right? Why did Philip bring Nathaniel to Jesus? I don't know. Okay, remember that, huh? Now, Philip found Nathaniel. Well, what, what, what is the relationship most likely of Philip and Nathaniel? Huh? They're friends. they're friends. Most likely they're friends, right? Philip was so excited to have found Jesus, and he encounters his friend, Nathaniel. He said, hey, Nathaniel, hey, buddy, you know what? We have found the Messiah. Come and see, etc. But you know what? This is not the only example of a friend bringing a friend. Okay? I'll tell you who else brought friends you know not only friends but brothers james and john, james and john. who else peter and, peter and andrew who brought who andrew brought peter. Huh? okay john john the apostle the beloved apostle brought his brother james okay now andrew brought his brother simon who was later to become peter and the first pope Okay? But wait a minute. Who brought Andrew and John to Jesus? John the, Baptist. John the Baptist. Very good, right? Because Andrew and John were first disciples of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was, what's his relationship to Jesus? Cousin. cousin of Jesus, right? The cousin of Jesus. And when he said, behold the Lamb of God, right? After Jesus was baptized, uh, he, he told him, behold the Lamb of God, right? He pointed Jesus to his own disciples. And guess what happened? Andrew and John started following Jesus, right? And they were the two who asked Jesus, Master, where do you live? Right? And Jesus said, well, birds of the air have nests, wolves have dens, and etc. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. But, but, but come and see, right? Come and see. So they follow Jesus. And then Andrew finds his brother Peter and brings him to Jesus. And then John finds his brother James, brings him to Jesus. Okay? And you know who else? Uh, uh, James the Less. 
There are two Jameses, right? James the older, the greater, and James the less. James was brought by his brother Jude. St. Jude is another apostle, a little less famous than uh, his brother, but again, he brought his brother. So what do, you, what, what do we see here? What, what is common in all of these people bringing each other close to Jesus? What is common? Find any commonality? Huh? Sophia? Huh? Don't you notice any, any commonality? Okay. In the interest of time, let me give it to you. These, these, these men, these first apostles, were all related to each other. Yeah, that's what you're going to say. Okay. <laughs> They're all related to each other. Either by blood, cousins, right? Brothers, or friends. Like Philip and Nathaniel. What does this tell us? This tells us that all of us are called to become apostles of Jesus Christ. Right? By virtue of our baptism. But you know where we can begin? To be apostles to others? You know where we can begin to bring Jesus to others? It is right here at home, right? Be an apostle to your own brothers and sisters. Be an apostle to your own family. Be an apostle to your own friends. See? Be an apostle for you older folks. Be an apo apostle to your classmates. Be an apostle to your co-workers. Be an apostle to your neighbors. Bring Jesus to the environments where you are in. The big question is, how do I do that? Well, look at Nathaniel and Philip. Philip did not really have to be talking much. He just said, well, come and see. Come and see. You know what that tells me? What that tells me is Philip was saying, well, just imitate me. What did I do? I went and followed Jesus. So just come. I'm inviting you. Come and imitate what I did. And you're going to find Jesus for yourself. Let Jesus introduce himself to you. What does that mean? That really the beginning of apostolate, the beginning of being an apostle to others, is first by showing good example. See? Like what Philip said, just come and see, just come and see what I did. I followed Jesus. So one of the best ways to really do apostolate without talking too much is first show good example. If you want to change a brother or sister's attitude, if you want to change hearts, if you want to show uh, 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 Jesus to others and, and, and make them know Jesus, the first requirement is show good example. Show in your lives, in our lives, that we are really followers of Jesus. That we're really following, following the way of Jesus. And we don't need to start, uh, we don't need to go out there preaching like, like preachers do, right? We don't have to go knocking on doors telling them, hey, I want to introduce Jesus Christ to you or whatever it is. No, just in your own environment, in our own home, right? Charity begins at home, right? So show that love at home first with your own brothers and sisters, with your own family. And then you can expand to your workplace, to your school environment, your classmates, your co-workers. And then you go out to your neighbors and other people you meet in the streets. Okay? You can be a shining light, an example. To other people without attracting attention to yourself without saying hey here I am I am a disciple of Jesus follow me no 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 you don't, you don't need to do anything like that people will be naturally attracted to your good example the magnet is Jesus Christ okay? the, the attraction is really Jesus Christ but if you are living if you're living the life of Jesus in you if you are really practicing your Catholic faith people will see that and people will get attracted to that. So the only really first requirement is let's live our faith very well. Let's live everything that we learn about here, put it into practice, and people will get attracted to that. Even if we don't say a single word, just give good example. Give the testimony of your own lives. And then people will get attracted to it. 
your own family will get attracted to it. And then they will start to ask, uh, where did you learn that? Uh, what is it that you're doing? Where, where did you learn all of these things? See? And then we can tell them, well, this is Jesus. See? This is Jesus. Priscilla is saying there, oh, we just have to exercise humility. Yes, that's true. Because it is not us. Okay? And we are not doing this to show off. We're not trying to live our faith to show off. Okay? No. To God be all the glory. Right? Deo omnis gloria. Greater glory and honor of God only. That's all we're interested in. We're just instruments. We're just using, we're just allowing ourselves to be instruments of God to bring other people to God. That's what an apostle does. That's what an apostle does. He's not attracting things to him. Like, like John the Baptist said, see, uh, I must increase, I must decrease, and he must increase. Right? That's what he said, right? I must increase, I, I must decrease. I'm just an apostle. My popularity should now, uh, uh, you know, decrease because Jesus has already manifested himself. Jesus is already out in public. He should increase. He is the real deal, not John the Baptist. So same thing with us. When we do apostolate, let us make Jesus shine. Let us make Jesus be the one manifested in the world through our good example. Okay? Yep, you got questions? What is that? I'm pretty sure it's in politics or that. No. <laughs> that's St. That's John the Baptist. Yes, Joe. Are you done now? Sorry? Done now. Am I done now? Yeah, I'm done now. Why? You got any question? No. No? Okay. We got to go. Yes, it's 7 7 uh, 17 already, folks. Uh, have a nice day. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you can put it into practice. If you got any comments, you know, please just put it on the comments there and. Uh, and uh, if you got any questions, put it there too. I'll try to answer them tomorrow or during the day today. Uh, and I, uh, you know what? I already have a Facebook page up. It's called, uh, of course, facebook.com forward slash Catholic Best Practices. Catholic Best Practices. I'd appreciate some likes if you uh, would like to like the page uh, so that we can spread this uh, to more people. I've been getting very nice feedback from you folks and from friends and everybody else. As I said, it's so heartwarming to realize we're being watched all over the world. So if we're doing some good, then uh, thank you. And again, all for the glory of God, right? Uh, and just to reiterate, I'm doing this for my kids. <laughs> so uh, if other families and other people could benefit from it too, then uh, so be it. But anyway, we're off to Mass. We're going off to Mass already. We don't want to be late for that. So thank you very much for watching. Okay, kids, let's go. Bye. Bye.